Today I have a trend reversal candlestick pattern for you that is my very favorite numino uno eins ichi uh what else do I know? Hana, that's Korean. Number one. I'm pentilingual with the number one, <laughs> which is not impressive at all. Okay, so there are two parts to this series on trend reversal versus trend retracement. Uh, go ahead and watch this one. This is, I said, number three, but uh, one and two, I'm putting links in the description below, and then you can go check those out together because you got to really put it all together, all the different parts. So the sum is greater than the um, individual parts. So uh, real briefly, just a quick little review. We've got the 15 EMA, that's the black line here. And we don't want it to go beyond the 15 EMA. If the trend is going to actually reverse, this is just a retrace. This is our line in the sand uh, of demarcation, so to say, for a weak retrace and expect to continue trend up. Number two is how long are we in that trend? The trend is your friend until the end. So we show you a technique there on how to do wave counting that is objective, uh, not Elliott wave. Okay, so the longer the trend continues, the more likely it is to reverse instead of just retrace. So let's take a look at this, and now we're going to apply our third tool, which is a candlestick pattern that, as I mentioned, is my favorite. So, all right, we've got a little trend going up here. We've held the 15 EMA, we've held the 15 EMA. And as we go forward, let's see, let me go forward. It's not letting me go forward, all right. Oh, I see why. I gotta get my drawing tool off of there, okay. So going forward, there we go, all right. So. Is that high probability? Well, first of all, is this a high probability uh, end in the trend? No, trend hasn't really gotten started yet. Okay, now we've got uh, a little extra length in that. Um, so you might look at this as the engulfing bar for a trend to end. Um, hmm, sort of, kind of, but again, we're really not that far in the trend. And also, as you see, we still hold the 15 EMA. There's a better pattern than that. There's another engulfing pattern. Um, different people have different specific rules, by the way, for engulfing patterns. Um, but I'm primarily looking at the real bodies for them and not uh, the entire candlestick length. So a couple engulfing. Uh, let's see if that one works. Nope, that didn't work either. Okay, now what do we got? So here's what we've got, my dear friends, and this is what I like. So we have had a couple of attempts, you could say. Um, at least there was some participation in people um, you know, going short here, going short. Very short-lived, by the way. Candlestick patterns are not long-term patterns that tell you what's going to happen in the long-term future. But if you combine it with these other things that I'm talking about, in this case especially, how long are we in that trend, now we're getting kind of extended in the trend. But the other thing that I like about it is, look at this. So here's the high. And look what happens right there. Oh, good. Nailed it. <laughs> okay, so now this is a pin bar. And pin bar is simply, the logic behind a pin bar is this. The market went up, it broke this high, or really pierced the high, did not break it. It pierced it. That's a clear distinction. The distinction is that the entire body and the entire, uh, even the wick, it got above there, but then the real body went below that resistance. So what that literally means in the auction place of the market is the people that took the trades up here where the wick is and not the body, those price levels were rejected. Rejection of value is called in a market profile, which is based on uh, auction place of the market. And so when it got up here, it's like, okay, yeah, we're still getting some exchanges, buys and sells, but when all was said and done at the end of the day, and this is a daily chart, um, the market decided it valued the market lower than that high. And so that is your rejection of value. It's simply, again, based on what are people willing to pay. And this is where it also ties into the length of that trend. That same pattern earlier in the trend would not be significant. It's only significant because it's late in an extended trend. 
And so, you know, what's going to happen is when the longer this goes, more people are going to feel like they've missed out. Oh, I should have gotten in here. Oh, I should have gotten in here. Oh, I should have gotten in here. And now they are like too expensive too expensive. Just like in the economy, you know, somebody can raise the price of the product higher, 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 but there comes a ceiling when people say, I'm not going to pay that anymore. That's, that's way too high. And so similar in the marketplace. All right. And so this is Forex, but this would be good for futures, stocks, um, whatever, any markets. Okay. And now we break down below that 15 EMA. Look, we get the same kind of bar again. That's another a rejection of value of the higher prices. Okay, we come up a little bit and we go back down, 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 down. And so now we've got the combination of our first three um, patterns. Number one, holding the 15 EMA. Number two, long trend. The longer the trend goes, the less likely people are willing to pay those high prices and the trend reverses. Rejection of value. If this was a double top, it would not be as high a probability trade. The fact that it really, the secret sauce here is that it's kind of like a stop run. You could look at it that way. Kind of like a stop run. Let me do that. Okay, so it comes out here. If people went short here, um, then the market goes back up, takes out the shorts. And then those people that were short, well, or the people who bought here, and it comes back down here, what are they doing? They're filling their shorts, okay? Sometimes literally. <laughs> but that's the uh, little secret sauce there. So there's other patterns that you can use as well. But when you see that one, where it's extended in a trend, and people are getting their shorts filled, <laughs> then, um, or taken out, I should say, then that's a really, really nice trade. Think of it this way. Stop runs. Everybody hates stop runs. You've probably been a victim of a stop run once or twice in your life. And instead of being hurt by them, look at what the institutions are doing and say, hey, I think I'm going to take advantage of that. I'm going to follow them. I'm going to look for those high prices. And then just the little pop up does not. The key is the real body has to be below this high. But the high of the bar must be above the high of that high. And that's your rejection of value and pattern. And instead of being victimized, you can become victorious with these stop run patterns. So uh, now another key feature, which I'm not going to go over in this series, but I do have a recorded video absolutely free, is timing. Timing your entries. And this is very important as well for trend reversals. So how to time it, you need a timing indicator and I got one for you and I'll give it to you absolutely free. Actually, there's nothing even to download. It's just a modification of an indicator you already have on your charts. So uh, that takes about an hour to cover that, give it to you, get it set up on your charts. So uh, go over to indicatorwebinar.com and watch the recorded, um, uh, used to be a live webinar, now I've recorded it, so you can watch it any day, any time, whatever's convenient to you, and get it set up in your charts, and I also teach you how to trade it, and that will get your timing for these end of trends, as well as beginning of new trends, locked in real solid to the one bar, to the penny, to the pip, to the tick, that's how exacting and precise that is.